Hi, Fatma. Hi, Marjan. How I'm, are you? I'm good. Nice to have you here Thank at last. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, so I came to know about you or was through a post uh, I saw a while back and it was about uh, writing uh, and I was very interested but unfortunately I couldn't attend uh, but I, th I said I have to meet her, I have to sit with her and then Somehow I knew that I knew the face. <laughs> yes. And it turned out that we are neighbors yes, yes. in Amwaj. Yes. And I saw you in the coffee shop and I said, that's her, that's her. And I came up to you and uh, introduced myself. And uh, we came to talk and uh, progress. Yes. And I said, come and tell us your story. Yes. <laughs> of how it came for you to reach here where you write and you love teaching that to other people. So take us back to high school, uh, yeah, college, uh, and, and then take it from there. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you. It's really nice to be here. And same, same. You know, it's uh, interesting because when I started to do the workshops, Marjan space was going to be the next space I wanted to kind of contact and get to know the place and see if I can collaborate with you. I hadn't known you as a, you know, right. at all, uh, and I'm not very good with faces, but when you came to see me to, in, um, in Amwaj, I thought, oh my God, I was, I was meant to be calling you like really <laughs> soon, so it was a really nice chance. Um, okay, so how did I start? Okay, so both, to be honest, both writing and teaching for me have been passions and hobbies since I was really, really young, even before I reached high school. They could okay. have as passions really, or at least to start with as interests and build into passions, started from a very young age. I would have been at least, I mean, maybe average around nine years old or something like that, wow. I would say, when I started okay. to write. Um, I think I was younger when I started to teach, even though I didn't know anything. I just always like to pretend that I was teaching my toys, you know, and things oh, like that. Oh, okay. I was saying yeah. nine years old, teaching? Yeah, Who are yeah. you teaching? No, I would, I would but put, yeah, I put I, my I toys relate. in a line and I would sit and I had a board and I'd, I'd write things that didn't really make sense, you know, uh, but I would just have this this um, interest and want to share knowledge, you know? Um, anyway, so yeah, I started writing quite young. If you want a little story, I, um, I was watching this movie called Dead Poet Society. In fact, my brother was watching the movie and I was there in the living room. And I remember there were two things that came up in that movie. One, the main character was talking about poetry. And I think he said a line along the lines of, you know, we don't just read poetry, we, um, something like we let it drip from our tongues like honey. Mm. You know, and I was really young, but I remember being so moved by that metaphor. I could see it and feel it, and I really, I, I was moved, really, really. And I remember even wanting to hide how I was feeling in front of my brother because it felt odd to have this light come inside me. As if me. you were exposed. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your feeling was exposed. Yeah, it was okay. so exposed. Um, and then also a poem came up in that movie. Um, and the last line goes like this. It's from Robert Frost, who's an American poet. And the last lines of, of that poem go, it's called The Road Not Taken. And it says, two roads diverged in a wood. Um, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. It's a beautiful poem. And I remember going to school a couple of days later and going to the library and looking for that poem, you know, remembering right. the name and feeling really quite curious and intrigued by that. I think that was the point I started to write. Okay. You know, I recognized how words moved me and I wanted to delve into them myself. Now, I kept writing a secret for a very long time. I used to write journals and poetry for years until my maybe senior year in high school, when I joined a poetry club after school and started to share my writing and even tell people that I was so writing. So you mean ah, so you mean you kept the writing as a secret? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. You didn't want anyone to know that yeah, you were. Yeah, I just okay. didn't want to share it for okay. some reason. I was I don't know maybe shy or afraid, but it was like my own secret, you know, that right. I like to sit and write poetry on my own, and it was, you know, rudimentary even at that age when I was maybe eleven or twelve. I remember writing a poem about, you know, um, 
uh, having a, what's the word, uh, being confused because I had all these desserts in front of me and I didn't know which ones to eat, you know? <laughs> okay. Because I, yeah, so I mean, it was, right. I'm yeah. a child, yeah. you know, at the yeah. end of the day. So these are my topics, you know, I'm talking about like, oh, I want chocolate, I want strawberries, and I want peaches, and I want this, but there's so much choice, I don't know what to do. And I'm describing in my poem the texture and the scent. So I'm st- I was still quite, I would say, sensual for my age, mm. you know, very delicate in my observation and, and what I enjoy. So yeah, so then when I, in my adolescence, I started, and then also in university, I started to be a lot more comfortable sharing my poetry. But even then, I wouldn't. So you went to college now. Now yeah. we're, we're in college years, right? Yes, yeah. What are you studying <coughs> at college? I'm studying philosophy. No, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's funny. I thought I wanted to study English literature, but then I realized that I didn't need to because I already had a very keen and high interest so I would naturally have a, a capacity for it. Okay. You know, I was good at analysis, and, and I was used to read a lot of stories and novels and poetry, so it wasn't something I needed guidance in. Mm-hmm. And I used to sneak into a lot of literature classes anyway, you know? Okay. Um, but yeah. then philosophy was something I was very interested in, but I didn't have the knowledge or the confidence in that field. So I took something that would have been more of a challenge for me. Yeah. Because okay. I know myself. I need a challenge. Otherwise, I, I just track of myself you know so I'm studying philosophy um, and then I, I was getting involved I actually started like a poetry club when I was there and, and you know I did poetry readings now what was interesting uh, when I came back to Bahrain which country was this uh, this was in Canada Canada okay. yeah yeah I went okay. to Canada to okay. a school called uh, Trent University yeah no it's, it's, a, it's Canada yeah yeah okay. and it's a very and in particular Trent was even a lot more into the liberal arts than other schools mm. it was a very progr- education wise progressive school you okay. know our classes were not lecture based they were tutorial based all of them okay. so it's all about sitting in a round table and having a discussion as opposed wow. to having a, a professor lecture to you that was very rare in my classes okay so it was really lovely all about discussion and argument and agreeing and disagreeing and so on and so forth. So a very rich academic environment. Mm. I was very, very lucky. And I, I even became really good friends with a few of my professors because, again, I'm a very curious, you know... Individual. Uh, individual, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I was going to call myself child. Anyway, and so I came back to Bahrain and I even joined what was back then called Ilham. Okay. It was an arts group started by Ali Al Saeed. He's a Bahraini writer, uh, and it was a very interesting uh, group. What we did was once a month they would launch uh, a type of exhibit or reading or something that um, showcased two to three local artists and open to the public and you know free of charge kind of thing. Okay. So I j- joined as one of the organizers, and I also um, performed a few times. So it was a performance art? Yeah, it was Not like a book club or... No, not a book club. Oh. So we would have musicians or artists showcasing their uh, art or, you know, people reading poetry or... It was interesting. A, yeah, it was very okay. interesting. And this was back in 2006 or seven, I want to say. Okay. When I joined Ilham. Um, maybe even earlier, but a lot, I mean, around that time. Mm-hmm. Now, what was interesting is even though at that point I told my friends, like it was known, let's say, that generally I liked, they know I like to read and they know I like to write, but whenever I had a poetry performance, like a recital, I would never invite any of my friends or family, ever, okay. ever. And I would, and people would, some of the people would know me, it's like, oh, that was wonderful, thank you for sharing, I really like your writing. Never, I wouldn't tell my mother or my father or my best friends, nothing. I would just like to show up and, Having, can you share why? Uh, you yeah, it was mortifying for me because you were afraid of them judging you. No, it was just they already knew enough about me, they didn't know, need to know more. It okay. was very, uh, you know, writing. I think any artist can relate to what we create is very vulnerable, yes, you know. And I felt like these people already knew me, and if they saw me reading my poetry and they heard the kind of topics and things I like to write about, it was equal to uh, seeing me naked. Okay. Really, uh, it yeah. really felt oh, like I would be so exposed, I just, no. No, okay. No, 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 no. It took me years before it was easy to actually share. It was still late, much later on. 
So yeah, so I continued in the path, and writing uh, was a passion. Yeah. But tell me, so you, so you came back, did you work? Yeah, I worked in marketing for about a little less than 10 years. Okay, but you had studied philosophy. I studied philosophy. I came uh, back. So you could get, I mean, you got yeah, yeah, into yeah. marketing. Yeah, yeah. I, so I came back with a philosophy diploma, let's say. Okay. Uh, and then I decided to study marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I went, I started working in PR, and then I studied marketing. As a certificate? Or yeah, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. I okay. did a bachelor's in marketing as well. Oh, bachelor's. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. And then these two crossed over. So I sure. studied and worked at the same time for a while. Um, and I worked in, in public relations, and then I did uh, events for a while, and then I joined an agency, and I was with them for about six years, and then I was managing the agency. I became, I went from a very hippie-like philosopher, student, you know, I was representative of the philosophy society at Trent, I was like, the, you know, the, the one person who will never follow the mold, and I jumped right into corporate, I followed the mold like there was no tomorrow, I was managing as a being a professional, very <laughs> professional. Yeah, I, mean, I was scary. I was a scary boss. I was, you know, I like to run a tight ship. I really, there was a part of myself, especially the creative part of myself. I think for a good while, I, if not forgot, kind of put it to rest for a while. But you were still in that group, right? Well, I was or, or in the Elham. No, I was no. in Elham. I think they lasted. They lasted no later than 2008 or nine. I think it was a, it okay. went on for two to three years. Okay, and then something it just like that. Yeah, it just up. it fizzled okay. out, and a lot of other movements and things started to spring up in Bahrain. Sure. You know, when we started Ilham, well, when Ali started Ilham, I joined a few months later. It was one of its first kinds for our generation mm -hmm. at that time. You know. Um, so it was easy to perform and not let anybody know about it. Okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is way before, obviously, social media, you know, things like that. So, so yeah, so I worked corporate, but I did these little things on the side, mm -hmm. but they were all on the side. Okay. You know, and then after marketing, I joined Family Business, which is El Saad Power Projects, and it was an electrical contracting business. And I went even more corporate. I went into business development, quality, safety, you know, I would... Tell me, were you writing at this stage? Yes. You were still writing. I was still writing. But not for yourself? Yeah, always for myself. Oh, for yourself. Yeah, okay. yeah. I still not for a journal or for anything? No, no. nothing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I... Commercial. Had, yeah, nothing. no, nothing commercial. Okay. I mean, part of my work included commercial or business writing. Mm -hmm. So when I was in marketing, I did a lot of corporate and copyright copy. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Um, I would... And I trained a lot of people to do writing who were my, my employees at that time. Uh, when I was in uh, contracting, I wrote, you know, company policies and procedures. I wrote contracts. Sure. Yeah. I continued. And, you know, until today, I will tell you, I love writing contracts. Mm -hmm. I find them to be fascinating and, and equally creative and fun. So for okay. me, writing okay. was still a big part of what I did, even if it wasn't necessarily creative writing or poetry writing. But but let me stop you right there. Sure. Now, now, contracts is is kind of like a whole different world because it ha it has a lot of legal issues in mm. it. Creative writing is just being creative and nobody will will hold you responsible for anything if it goes wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what okay. is the connection there? Okay, so when you write a contract, there are two things, many things, but two particular things that that render creativity. One is you need to imagine all the potential scenarios that can happen in your Between engagement. the two parties. Yes. Okay. So that itself is already a creative process. You need to imagine worst case scenario, best case scenario, all of that. The other thing you need to imagine or be aware of when you're dealing with words is how can these words be interpreted? How many ways and how do I make sure that the interpretation is led to exactly where I want it or it clear and ambiguous enough wow. to cover yes. my, yes. right? Yes. That is quite creative. That takes knowledge of language, of words. You know, sometimes, you know, the comma in the right place, the word, sometimes if you take the word in the same sentence and you just put it later or before, oh, it definitely. changes things. Definitely. So that yeah. delicacy of writing became fascinating for me. Okay. You know, so okay. for me, it's, it's still very creative. Yeah. I get the same question, how do you like contracts? I say, I love them uh, because... Okay. 
there's a lot of imagination and preciseness. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to respect the word when you write a contract. Right. You know, you create term terminology. You say yeah. this word, the term is exactly within the scope of A to, to B, for example. C, D, K don't apply. Mm-hmm. Just that I find interesting. Writing definitions is part of writing contracts. I like writing definitions mm-hmm. because I love words, you know. I realized for me that writing wasn't just the love of writing, but the love of words and what they can do and how they shape our life. Understand. You know, so yeah. it went beyond just poetry to the word itself and then in any shape or form and medium that the word can be used. Okay. So if it's, you know, I will read manuals because, and I will find them fascinating and fun. Because <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I hate manuals. I mean, I don't, and I can't, I can't take the words and put them into action. Yes. You yeah. know, but I can yeah. enjoy reading the manual because the language style is interesting. Mm. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. <coughs> so yeah, so I think my journey with words has always been there. It's okay. just taken different shapes. Right. So now you are uh, working with the, your family business. Yeah, yeah. At this point, I'm working family business. This okay. was between 2012 to 2016. Okay. Or end of so exactly four years yeah. I was there. And um, still no writing no. for for sense of of like having it as an e- economic uh, yeah no not thing. at all okay. okay you know i did random pieces there here and there but commissioned work okay. you know somebody calls me and wants me to write something and i think oh yeah sure this is just corporate copy okay that is is for me the least creative Mm-mm. you know and also i've done it so much i'm خلاص but anyway So at this point, I'm in family business. I have the random. I'm, I used to teach all this time, by the way. All these ah, years right. I've been yes, teaching. Yes, all these years yes. I've been tutoring one-on-one students of all ages. Okay. So I taught when I was in university. I taught when I was in high school. Uh, which? Um, um, all. Like math, English. All. A- every, uh, Everything. Ob- yeah, okay. yeah. Depending on the age. Uh, yeah. If I can grasp the material at an age. Like just recently, I had a student. She's... 13, I want to say, or 14, I was teaching her math. So I can, do, I mean, if they get older than that, I can't do math. But I've taught a lot of subjects. I've taught math, physics, biology, history. Even for okay. university students, I, even though I've not, not studied psychology, I've worked with psychology students. Like I have now a student, I'm working with her, she's doing her uh, master's thesis. Uh, and she's a student of psychology in Scotland. So is it because you're like helping them in their writing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. it takes, and you know, <laughs> we'll come back to this in a bit, yeah. but it's, I find, uh, thank God, that if I have an interest in any, <clears throat> uh, let's say, genre or industry of knowledge, mm-hmm. then I can teach myself. Sure. And as I can teach myself, then I can teach someone else. So this is what I've always done. So sometimes I, like for example, I've had, I used to have no interest in physics, but I once had a student who needed a physics t- tutor, um, younger, not a, not a too complicated physics. Sure. So I said, okay, fine, get me the textbook. If I can get it, I'll teach it, you know? Yeah. And I, then I found, I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually really interesting, you know? So then I found interest and then I went and taught the subject. Okay. So things like that, you know, and also teaching, um, Marjan specifically is not about imparting knowledge. It's about building the skill for the person to learn. Right. So that right. skill is the same regardless yeah. of what the information being learned sure. is. And that's what I usually like to do when I teach, which is why I figure I can teach any subject because I'm not teaching the content. I'm teaching the skill of acquiring knowledge. the knowledge. You know, yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I, uh, so all this time I've been tutoring on the side for fun. Okay. Because I enjoy it, I have a good time, and thank God I happen to be good at it. Like yeah. my students continue to come back and recommend me, and parents really like me, and and I've had all ages from six year olds to thirty, forty year olds. I've taught. Okay. You know, okay. yeah. <clears throat> so a lot of ages I've yes. dealt with, yeah. and all of that. Now, so at this stage, this is two thousand fi- end of two thousand fifteen. I've had about an average of 12 year work experience, yeah, right. professional, and I will tell you, Marjan, up to that point, I loved it. At no point did I think, oh, I'm bored, I can't stand this. The only thought I had was, I will retire early, like I will retire in my late 40s, early 50s, 
uh, you know, let's say mid to late 40s, and I will teach and write. I will be a college professor, and I'm going to publish my books. Okay. okay. This is, anyway, I, I wasn't 40 yet. I think I was 30 in my early 30s at that stage. And I just had an epiphany. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading a book and it was talking about, you know, having a life purpose. And, you know, I was reading Bertrand Russell, who is one of my favorite philosophers and thinkers. He is really, really ahead of his time. This man lived until the age of 98. Okay. And he was sharp until that age. Interesting. Very, very, very inspiring character. Yeah. So I was reading his autobiography. And it was through that book that I was inspired, realizing that, you know, I have a career and I like my career. I don't mind it. But I'm not really living for a life purpose. Mm. You know, it was just this sudden realization and epiphany. And I thought, okay, Fatma, you've been saying for the last X years that when I reach my 40s or late 40s, I'm going to retire early and go live the life I want. I said, why are why you waiting are you for wait? another 10 to 15 years to live the life you want? Start now, mm. you know? So I went to my dad literally two days later. I said, Baba, I'm quitting. <laughs> He says, okay, what are you going to do? I said, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just not this. I'm going to find out as I go along. And so early 2016, I start to find out as I go along. So I start, this is when I start to post my poetry on Instagram and online. Oh, okay. This is the first time I actually publicly share my writing with whoever is going to yeah. see it. So was it only poetry or there were art, art, articles also? I'd written articles, I have, but these, you but know... But mostly? Mostly poetry. poetry. Yeah, yeah, poetry okay. is my default medium. Okay. You know, I so I can write an article, but I have to work on it. I can mm. write a story, but I have to work on right. it. Right. I don't need to work on writing uh -huh. a poem. Mm -hmm. The poem comes to me on yeah. its own. You know, it knocks yeah. on my door and I open it or I don't. Okay. You know, if I don't open it, it will knock on somebody else's door. <laughs> okay. You know, but that's that's creativity, right? So poetry is my default state. I think in poetry sometimes. Yeah. I look at, for me, I see the world in poetry. If I'm happy, everything becomes rhythmic and poetic for me. Okay. You know, I'm very, I love, like, I will... At one point, I can share my writing with you. I have so many poems I've written about poetry. And that's very common for a lot of poets. Mm. We romance our craft a lot, you know? So, yeah. But, you know, when I started to share... It's so funny. I remember this now. When I started to share my poetry on Instagram, it took me maybe a couple of months before I stopped cringing every time I clicked share. Every time I, before I share, I, I'm closing my eyes. I'm thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God. Do you want to share this? You don't want to share yeah, this? I, Fatma, what are you doing? Hey, what is this? And, who, and, and, and people are going to see it, and then they're going to see through me. me yeah. You know, yeah. and it's it's exposure, it's discomfort, you know. it's. So what happened with with when you did start sharing? What were the feedbacks? I uh, was getting really lovely feedback, you know. Okay. People were always like, oh, I like your writing. I get really nice comments. Um, you know, people are happy. I get, a, I mean, after it took a few months, but I remember the first time, okay, maybe it was a year later or whatever, anywhere between six months to a year, year mm. later. You know, I was at this event in Bahrain and this person comes to me and says, oh, you're Fatma the poet. Okay. You know, I, sh I, I follow you. I really like your writing. And when the stranger comes to you and says, oh, you're the poet, all of a sudden I feel like I'm transported into a, a, an age that I belong to. Right. You know, yeah. I always used to think that I was, if I was born 100 years earlier or even 50 years earlier, then that would be a time where I would find my comrades. Right. You know, okay. the writers and the poets and the artists and the, you know, because our modern day doesn't bring us together the way they sure. used to, you know. Yeah. Um, but it started, and I started to meet more creative people because I was open to, my, to sharing my creativity. Okay. I started to make more creative friends, musicians, artists, performers, whatever, mm. you know. I, I left a corporate tri life, excuse me, <clears throat> I left a corporate life and found myself in a creative life. Okay. You know, my friends, I don't want to say change, but I had a whole new set of uh, social living and context sure. because... Suddenly people are like, oh, we want, we need a writer for this. You know, even yeah. musicians want, like, oh, I want, we want something for our next album or, you know, and then I was hired to write articles about art, okay. you know, and yeah. then I was hired to write articles covering an art exhibit, you know, and so I started posting and work started to come f for me as a writer. Okay. 
you that, know? That, that's where I was going to go. So, so you were, you continued teaching. And you were kind of making a living out of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I started to be approached as writer, you know? Do you think the Instagram posts kind of made people realize? I mean, it, it I don't want to say exposed you, but made you known? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. It yeah. made me known. And, you know, I remember as well one of, the, one of the other first times I heard, I was with on the phone with a friend um, and... You know, somebody asked, asked him, oh, like, who are you on the phone with? And he said, oh, I'm talking to Fatma. And the person on the other end said, oh, Fatma, the writer? The, okay. Oh, my God. It was one of my proudest moments. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, oh, that's, that's me. That's me. Fatma, I'm the, the writer. writer. Yeah. Yes. You know, I yeah. always thought that it would remain a dream, yeah. not a reality. Yeah. To just have that title, the writer. Right. But next to mine, yeah. you know, as a default. So it became known, oh, yeah, we know Fatma, the writer, Fatma, the writer. Uh, Fatma was never anything other than Fatma before right. that, you know, yeah. although I always wrote, Yeah, you know. And then so they started coming to you yeah, to write I, uh, about art. About uh, art, and then it became, it turned into a lot of corporate copies. So companies then would, would also hire me. I would especially get, for example, jobs that required a combination of corporate writing and creative writing, mm. you know. So, for example, Standard Chartered would contact me and say, okay, we have this really big event and we want a write-up, but we don't want it to be boring because we have delegates coming from everywhere. So we want something creative and different and innovative and, you know, and they would come to me and I would nice. write like a epic poem for a presentation, as you know, things right. like that. So I did a lot of experimental poetry as well. When I launched... Um, um, Melja contacted me a couple of times yes. to do some writing for them right. as well, you know, as an art space. Um, and then Melja liked my work and they were sponsored by Red Bull and then Red Bull contacted me to do writing for them. Mm. And it just kind of kept going and spiraling. I remember when I did, I approached Melja to, to do art installations, so to do poetry installations. You know, okay. and, which is which is what? So I created a, a, a poem. So the first one I did, for example, was a, a theme of time. Um, if I mean, I have different themes that I talk about a lot in my writing. Mm. One of the themes was time. Okay. And uh, so I decided to do a timed theme installation. So what I did is I chose particular pieces of poetry that were separate but together told a story. Okay. And then I blew them up in production, but then I also built a physical story around it with clocks and things like that. So it was something that vis visibly had a story, but also when you go in, the writing brings the story more forward. More forward. Okay. You know, so it was, okay. I took a nice wall and I did a whole installation based on poetry and using clocks right. and different uh, crafty things, you know. Sure. So Melja really liked that concept. Uh, so they, they contacted me a few months later and said, we want you to come and do another installation for mm, us, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. So I continued yeah. doing installation poetry uh, with Melja for about two years. Okay. So that also kind of brought a lot of uh, attention into creative writing and how I can apply that. Now, where I also got lucky is I'd had 12 years corporate experience and I managed two businesses. Mm -hmm. So I was really able to work well with companies and deliver a certain creativity met with a level of professionalism. Mm -hmm. So I started to also get clients outside of Bahrain. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so I have clients yeah. like all over the region, basically. You know, I have clients in, in, uh, in Saudi, in Kuwait, uh, whether it's magazines or companies, things like that. Okay. So I stayed on this journey until about two years ago yeah um so between 2016 to 2020-ish 20 20-ish yeah uh Cor and i and i love corona it. time yeah yeah <laughs> COVID corona time, time yeah COVID time. COVID time yeah, yeah. So, but at this point, halas, I'm not worried. I no longer worry about sharing anything online, even even if I think it's horrible. Like, mm. I mean, we don't always love our work. Yeah. You know, there are poems I like a lot, and there are poems I like. Uh, sure, you know. Um, when I started to share, for me, it was important to share the things that I thought were like really it good. Good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I honestly don't care anymore. I realize everybody has their own subjectivity, what they like. It's, it used to piss me off sometimes, you know. I put up a poem and I think, this one is killer. Yeah. And, and it then, has no responses. <laughs> and then I put something up, I'm like, oh, whatever, you know, Audi. And then the responses I get, and I think, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah. Don't you know good writing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Um, so it just didn't matter anymore. Okay. You know, it's I stopped feeling so cringy and and scared and uncomfortable yeah. and and vulnerable and exposed. So what happened? Where did it shift to? What what happened then? You know, I think. I think it's just callousness. I think you know when you keep playing the guitar and then eventually your f- your fingers hurt at first and then they become a bit rough or yeah. a bit hardened. I think it's just that. Yeah. I think that part no, but, of me. Uh, yeah, but what happened to you? Now now you you said okay yeah, it, and in then, 2020 Yeah. In uh, 2020 I decided I still do some commissioned work right. but I decided to s- to slow down and stop doing commissioned mm-hmm. work. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed writing for companies. I enjoyed, you know, whether it's articles or corporate whatevers, you know. Uh, but I got tired of and and disheartened. I don't want to say disheartened. Disinterested in lending my voice to anyone else. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I would I would do my creative writing, and I, okay, I posted up my poetry. I did performances and things like that. But I'm not publishing my own personal work. The work that is being published is. The words of someone else. Someone else, okay, yeah. I'm the one crafting these words, yeah, but, but it's, it's not, not my, yours. It's not yeah. mine, yeah. you know? I'm I'm just a, a craftsman in this yeah. deja, but I'm not a, an artist, you okay. know? I'm not expressing my own ideas. And it would just, it got to a point where I'd get a job, and it's a great job, and it's paying well, and I'm just thinking, oh my God, somebody shoots me, you know? I, just, yeah. I can't write another website, I can't. Yeah, I, it's, I don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, yeah. And and look, one of the things that I used to do is I would hire and train younger writers. Okay. So I would so I, teach them. Yeah, I would uh, writing exactly, skills. Exactly. Yeah, somebody who is a writer or trying to be or wanting, yeah. I would commission them for the job, and then I would quality control. Them. Right. So I would direct them where they need to go, yeah. edit their work, bring it up to my standard, and deliver. Okay. So I'm kind of middle manning yeah. it for a while, you right. know, just until I figure things out. Uh, okay. And I still do that here and there, but not as much because now I just refer the job to other writers. Yeah. I say, here, just talk to this yeah. person or that person. So what now? Now I'm work now <laughs> I'm launching my own workshops. Okay. You know, I've taught same thing with teaching. I've taught for years somebody else's curriculum. Right. And it used to drive me insane. Because right. even when I teach a kid certain things that the school wants them to know I will say, okay, we're going to learn this to pass our test or our exam yeah. or whatever, but also you need to learn these other things because what the school is telling you is not enough and not good enough. <laughs> okay. okay, They're boxing your thinking. Let's make you more analytical, more mm-hmm. curious, more whatever. So this is why I wanted to do two things. I wanted to teach what I feel is important. You know, uh, So my creative writing workshops are all about... They're not just about creative writing, they're about creative thinking. Okay. You know, cause, yeah. you know, because writing is the way we see the world, writing is the way we express the world, and it reflects back on us. So the way I think is the way I write, and then if I work on the way I write, then it helps evolve also the way that I think. And it's a cycle. True. Sure. True. Sure. You know? Yeah. So now I'm building and inshallah I continue to writing workshops that are targeted to multiple forms of writing but the idea all comes back to the same is expanding and, ev- and evolving our expression and our thinking space and our observation space yeah. you know the creative observer yeah. versus just the observer or the passerby you know it's like the difference of walking through a gallery and you're just kind of looking at the art and saying oh that's nice and walking on uh. as opposed to stopping and noticing brush stroke and color differences right. and things like that and then being and then having that reflect back. So you want to teach that to the writers? Yeah, absolutely. To yeah. anybody, you yeah. know. Or, yeah, anybody yeah, yeah. who's interested, who's interested to, to write. Yeah. yeah, so I started to design my own writing workshops. Okay. And now I'm also working on my first book of poetry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I'm... Uh, so that will be your first book That will be book my first... Yeah, poetry my first publication. coming out? Publication? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. And hopefully it should be... I mean, let's see how it goes, but... By the, let's say by fall, yeah. I should be able to launch it, hopefully, if I get the right publishers and things like that. I'm Lovely. in the design stage Lovely. now. And you have to <coughs> to uh, launch it at MySpace. Absolutely, Diane. Oh, thank yes. you. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes, yes. we'll great. have the event there. Fantastic. Lovely. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yes, please. And, um, and, and we'll tell everyone that, that you're having... Uh, a, a journal workshop yes, coming up? Yes, have, yeah. having a journaling workshop coming up at your space. And, you know, journaling is, 
is also a type of writing that I sure. started very yeah. young. I, okay. I think I started probably journaling before I started poetry. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm sure any girl remembers oh, these yeah. little <laughs> diaries with the logs, <laughs> yes. you know? Yeah. I mean, I just, I loved these and I had so many. I used to just write in them all the time. Right. Um, and then it became, you know, as you grow up, so does your 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 book looks more adulty, True. right? True. Um, but yeah, journaling is a is the tool and medium. You know, actually, let's let's stop giving it these uh, bland and and horrible names. Journaling is a friend. Yeah. yeah journaling yeah. is a best friend that I think everybody should have. Yeah. I really believe in it as a practice for not just, yeah. you know, they talk about it as good for mental and emotional wellness and yeah. health. Yes, absolutely. But it's beyond mental health and can, emotional can health. Can we say becoming friends with your thoughts? Yeah, completely. Becoming <laughs> friends with your thoughts and evolving Link, through yeah. that friendship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. So this is what I mean when I want to create my own writing workshops. I want to create the topics and the mediums and the ways to help people uh, express themselves, but also explore themselves. Okay. Great. You know, writing is such an it's such a a tool that we all have. Not everybody can pick up a paintbrush, right? Right. You know, or yeah. a piano or a guitar, but a pen is. We yeah. all have uh, words. Course, yeah. We all have all them. Right, yeah. So why don't we learn how to use them in a way that will reflect back to us how we want to grow as people? You know, it's a it's lovely. A, yeah. So. Let's. Let's end it with that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and we'll tell everyone to, well, we'll be posting about okay. your uh, workshop, Fantastic. the journaling workshop, and uh, we'll take it from there. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing your story with My us. My pleasure. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank Thanks. you.